Hiya, Martin here. Thank you for joining me for this week's video. I hope you're all well and you have had creative weeks and weekends in your workshops. This week there's going to be no turning whatsoever, I'm afraid, as I am waiting for some supplies to arrive for um, a project I'm halfway through. So this week I thought I would go through my extraction system and how it works and give you an insight into the bits and bobs that I've used for it and also to fulfil various viewer requests. Um, I've also had a request for the airbrush um, system which I'll do in a couple of weeks. Um, so due to popular demand here is a little bit about my extraction system. Uh, well first of all let's start at that end. Okay, here we are at the sanding wheel, which is the head of my very first lathe um, with a, a plywood wheel um, that I've, and I've built a box for it. But in the end of the box, I've got a blast gate which takes as much of the dust as possible away from the sanding wheel. Um, these blast gates I got from um, Axminster Tool and Machinery. Attached to that um, is some um, tumble dryer or dryer pipe hosing stuff. It's four mil, so four mil, four inches. So it's a hundred mil um, in UK measurements metric, um, and that's just attached onto there with um, a Jubilee hose clip thing. And then they all move down in sequence to the pen lathe, then the main lathe, and they go over the roof and out of that corner over there. So there's a purchased blast gate here, um, which is not the greatest blast gate in the world. There are better ones out there. Next, it goes underneath and connects to the pen lathe. So let's take a look at that. Beneath the pen lathe here, you can get a really good idea of how the system goes together. Um, so on this side over here on the left we've got the pipe or the hose coming from the sanding wheel which is connected to a 4 inch T-joint that goes up to the lathe bed and the blast gate that I made directly above it. And then from this side there's a pipe that goes off and joins the bottom of the main lathe. And just looking over here that's beginning to slip off so I need to just amend that a little bit and the great thing about having the panel in front of the lathe like this means that I'm, I've got easy access to this particular lathe. The other one um, isn't quite so easy but I do have easier access round the back and, the, and uh, you can see that the pipes there are just held together with um, the Jubilee clips and this um, elbow joint here, no not elbow joint, T-joint here um, is um, stuck in using silicon. There. Easy, with, with the inspection panel it's an easy two minute job just to check each of the uh, connections haven't slipped or anything like that. Um, now why am I using tumble dryer hose rather than the big black stuff? Well the answer is simple really. Uh, I think for probably a third or a quarter of the price of the um, black hosing, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, it's, it's really worthwhile. It's, it's fairly tough. Um, it's fairly tough stuff. It's um, a little bit stretchy and it's flexible enough to go around corners quite tightly and seeing as the only thing it's really taking away um, is dust and a very small amount of chippings and nothing particularly sharp, um, using this tumble dryer hose or dryer hose is um, a really really sensible thing um, to use and also to save a fair amount of money too. Now on top of the elbow joint, you can't see it very well on this angle but I'll show you on the main lathe there is a homemade blast gate under there and an extractor hood type thing as well. So when I'm turning pens and any small spindles on this lathe there is a really great amount of suction straight down into the system. And then the 
glass gate just slides shut. Um, so I can use the other lathe for bigger stuff. Now the setup beneath the main lathe here is exactly the same as the pen lathe, so I won't show you beneath this one because it means I've got to get all round the back, um, which is a very dusty experience. Um, but here is the homemade, what's it called? Da, 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 blast shield, blast gate, there we go. Um, and it's three pieces of 15mm, um, 6mm ply, um, on top of three pieces of 10mm ply. I'll put a photograph up um, so you can see it in detail. And then it just slides, the shield itself just slides in and out, which, um, which is cool. Um, and this, this is actually more effective than the purchased ones, um, hence why I made a couple of them. Um, I can, if I need to, stick something else in here a sort of a bendy one or something like that, I can stick that in here um, if I need to. Um, and this takes um, the major vast majority of the dust away from the sanding on um, the main lathe here. Uh, and then that goes down and then up and over the top, but I'll show you that as well in a minute. And this also has a big, um, a big dust hood thing that comes over the top um, and takes away the dust. Now, I'm up in the roof. Um, now, from the back of the main lathe, um, the pipe comes up the back of the workbench where all the tools are um, and joins um, a 90 degree elbow joint here, which I hope you can see. Um, and then that joint goes onto some 4 inch um, guttering downpipe. And then all of that goes, I don't think you can see this particularly well. But all of this goes down to the opposite corner over there where it then begins its journey downwards again and then outside to the extractor itself. Now when the dust has come over the top of the roof through the 4 inch or 100 mil guttering it goes down around another 90 degree bend and then straight down here um, in the black pipe. Now the black pipe here is the stuff that's really expensive, or at least I think it's really expensive. Um, so I substituted that for the tumble dryer hose and saved myself at least a third, maybe even a quarter of the price of this stuff um, for the same length. Um, and it joins another T-joint here, um, which I can take off. I can take off and then attach something else if I need to. Um, to hoover up or use on the drill press or somewhere else along um, the bench with some additional hose. It's not the prettiest looking thing, but it works and it's functional. Um, and then from there it goes down through a hole in the wall and then outside, which I'll show you in a second. Um, now I must mention that although the extraction system I've got here works really really well. Um, I'll show you the amount of suction that I get um, from it in a mo. Um, you can't just have an extraction system and think that's okay. You need to be wearing a respirator as well when you do your sanding and your finishing because there is always going to be some dust in the air. Um, so a respirator like this one is great, it's one of the full hooded, perhaps an Airshield Pro or the JPS or something like that would be just as beneficial as wearing one of these. If you're just starting out um, and you're on a budget then those disposable paper masks will do for the interim but you are much better off getting a dedicated respirator than using those um, masks or an extraction system by itself. No. Now I must make mention and a big thank you to Paul Jones who has commented a couple of times on my videos um, about dust, especially when I was ill a few weeks ago. Um, he says, I mentioned before Bill Plentz who has designed and distributed plans for a dust separation cyclone which he freely distributes along with his expertise in fluid dynamics and the diseases that small particle dust can cause in the woodworker's lungs. Um, I'll find that information and I'll put links to it um, in the description. So, B 
big thanks to Paul Jones for that. I will put the links uh, in the description as it's going to be a really interesting and informative read for everybody. Um, right, now let's go and take a look outside at where everything ends up. I think I'm being stalked by that cockerel from the uh, symposium competition bloopers video. There's one over there that's a new addition to the neighbourhood. Joy! Right, anyway. Outside the workshop I built this little shed um, in which to keep um, the extractor unit itself. There's an air vent at the top and there's also um, air space down at the very bottom as well to help with airflow to keep the motor of the unit cool. And then inside... <laughs> that cockerel's going to do my head in. Um, and inside is the extractor unit itself. So the pipe comes out of the out of the wall down there and then into the unit via a right angle bend and it all just ends up in the bag down here. Now I don't use the bags that you can actually buy um, because again they're expensive and if you know somebody with a dog um, you can use, I mean I'm using just a, um, a doggy big uh, 12 kilogram, is that 12? Yeah, 12 kilogram um, food bag that's um, plastic covered and it, it does the job absolutely brilliantly um, and I can just empty it and reuse the bag again. Now the unit itself um, has since been discontinued I've learnt um, and it is, wait for the lorry to go by, um, it's an Electra Beckham um, SPA 1000 um, made in 1992 so no wonder it's been discontinued. Um, and it has a suction capacity of a thousand cubic meters an hour, which is um, more than enough for my little workshop. Um, and it, it, I, I've got no idea how much it was, um, as it was very kindly given to me by um, um, a local wood turner's um, widow. Um, so this was gifted to me, but what I'll do is that cockerel, honestly, what I'll do is I'll find, um, I'll find some links to um, comparable pieces or comparable um, pieces of kit extractors uh, and I'll put them in the description and also on the website too. Um, so yeah, it's a great little system. It works really, really well and I'm very, very pleased with it. And now we're back inside the workshop. I've left the extractor running and now what I didn't show you is just on that wall over there uh, is the plug for the extractor, so the, the actual unit itself, um, the cable runs back into the workshop so I can easily switch it on and off from uh, inside. I could, if I wanted to, run the cable over the top and down here so I've got a switch in between the two lathes that I could just switch it on and off but it's six feet over there so why do I need to you know, worry about spending more money on getting a switch over here. It would be nice and it will happen eventually but not at the moment, so it's just a plug in a wall over there that I can turn it on and off with. But as you can hear, it's still pretty quiet. I can have a perfectly sensible conversation with you, <laughs> um, or a student, or somebody else that I have in the workshop here, and it all works, and, it, and it's all um, a reasonable volume. And it, the, uh, the unit itself has got quite a lot of um, suction. Let me move the camera and I'll show you what I mean. Alright, so I've put the hood um, over the unit so hopefully you'll be able to see this uh, and I've got in my hand some dust and chippings and stuff and just you oh yes you can see the uh, the chuck here but if I just drizzle those in you can see that I mean these are quite this isn't just dust this is chippings as well but you can see it's being sucked in quite happily and when the lathe's spinning and the dust is coming off the bottom um, the suction just through there is really good. There are some amendments and stuff that I would consider actually making to this particular setup and that would one would be to have a narrower hood um, that would, would then have a sort of a, a narrower band of suction as it were because I very rarely turn stuff this long um, I don't think that this hood is good enough for everything that I do. 
So another hood that's narrower to narrow the field of suction down would be more effective for the bowls and stuff that I turn that generally come out to about here um, on the lathe. Um, and also perhaps um, a bed that comes out and just touches the edge of the actual lathe bed here or maybe even an additional um, suction hole beneath the lathe um, under here to catch any downward working, downward travelling dust. Um, so I will, I, get, I will get on to doing a narrower hood then I've got the two hoods depending, if, depending upon if I'm doing spindles or bowl work. Um, other than that I don't think there's any other amendments that I would want to make to the system at the moment. Um, it all works really well and the best thing you can do is make sure that your joints are as airtight as possible and your um, blast gates are as airtight as possible because when this one's working the other two need to be closed and if there's a little air gap in there it slightly reduces the suction um, of the one that I'm working on um, but for the most part I'm really really pleased with how the system works well I hope you have enjoyed the overview of the um, extraction system it's been nice to actually have a look at it again myself actually and be able to explain to you how my system works there are lots of different ways to have your extraction system and probably the best the, the best thing would be to have as few turns in it as possible I, I would think I mean I've got a few 90 degree bends but that's because I can't have it any other way and have the extractor unit outside in that location so I'll put links to the various bits of kit um, that I use like the um, the tumble dryer hose and stuff um, um, a comparable unit to the one that I use um, and the clamps and the brackets because the what I didn't show you stupidly uh, is are the brackets that actually hold the pipe to the wall or the ceiling or whatever but I'll put links to those in the uh, in the description um, so thanks very much indeed for watching please do like share and subscribe if you haven't done so already and if you feel so inclined please do leave a comment I will always get back to you as soon as I possibly can bye for now